Oh, there's the man who will run the middle, Frank Murphy, Peter Martin, Oshin Quinn run the lines, Brian McNeese is the television match official, should and no doubt we will require him. So then the Aviva Stadium, talk of in and around 35,000, doesn't look like that just yet, although you know they always come at the last minute out to their seats. Both these sides, of course, played their last matches here and with such different results. Leinster on to a Heineken Champions Cup final. Munster, the heartbreak of defeat against Toulouse with those penalty kicks. They will look to heal the scar of what happened in the Aviva last with a big, big performance against Leinster tonight. Really interesting to see particularly how the number sixes go for both sides for Leinster Last now. in the Leave number him. six shirt is Ryan Baird back from injury in the number six shirt for Munster Finian Witcherly his first start at flanker he's in the second row right now it's Penny who bursts into the Munster line Connor Murray was the one to make the tackle on him and Leinster immediately setting those patterns up and Munster being asked to do the tackling Harry Byrne restored to the number 10, played a couple of games in the number 12 shirt for oh, Leinster this release. season. Good defensive line from Munster again there for young Cormac Foley. Uh, scrum half and Ryan Baird that is into rolling. the 22. Leinster playing with advantage and playing with confidence. And why wouldn't they as Joe McCarthy takes number it into contact now. Crossfield kick from Frawley, and they have a man out wide, and that man is Penny, Scott Penny, oh, what a start, what a start from Leinster, Scott Penny in, in the corner, they built and they built, and the vision from Frawley to see the man out wide, and wasn't it executed brilliantly. That is top class from Leinster, what a start. I mean, they have Ryan Baird on the left-hand side. He's making the gain line. Scott Penny, that's the second big carry in that, in that phase of play. They had the penalty advantage, but what a kick from Frawley. We talk about him as a second playmaker, but that's what he can bring. And, you know, Penny, we used to see him scoring from close in. He's very dynamic, but he's just shown there his football and skills to beat Carberry. A little bit of footwork, and he, he gets in the corner. Dream start for Lenzer, but the kickoff from Harry Byrne just on the 10 metre line on the head of Ryan Bear to get possession back was, was majestic and uh, yeah brilliant start from Leicester spraying the ball from left to right perfect conditions to do that at the Aviva a little dark overhead but a warm evening not a breath of wind and Leinster straight to it and with the conversion attempt to come out wide that one goes across the face of the post so just the five for Leinster but well, if Munster were in any doubt about the quality of what was being put on show for Leinster, I think that opening couple of minutes answers that question. Yeah, there's been a huge amount of positivity about Munster, obviously, since since that Toulouse game, and, and obviously what they did was go up to Ulster away, but they're coming into this game with, with pressure on them, obviously, to get that five points, uh, or to win the game, to get a, ho uh, a home draw, and now just a dagger blow straight away. It'd be interesting to see how they react to this. Well, they could lose with a bonus point and score four tries. That would give them two points, and they would be the two points that they would need to get into the top four. They'd get ahead of the Bulls on um, points difference, and that would give them a home quarter final. Well, that's... Well, let's leave all that until a little bit later. For right now, Munster will want to go about winning this game. As Mike Haley carries it back. 28 years of age now, Haley. And Munster get the penalty, and they needed that to settle themselves in, get themselves some territory now. No doubt Carberry will kick the line and give them an opportunity to throw to the line out inside the Leinster 22. Yeah, soft, soft penalty to give away. Good by Haley, just running it back hard. He's been exceptional for Munster this season, but Jordan Larmer obviously a little bit of ring rust, just doesn't clear the, the rook area quick enough, and Munster get a chance to strike right back. I think Carberry would have preferred a little bit more distance on that. So many other little subplots going on with the New Zealand tour on the horizon as well for Ireland. And with the extended squad going now with two games against the Maori, you look at players like Mike Haley and indeed the aforementioned Witcherleys, both of them, Thomas Ahern, they'll be thinking maybe we could get on that plane, maybe expecting to get on that plane, but performance will be what Andy Farrell is looking for on and in games like this. 
Munster take it into contact. Connor Murray sets it up and it's taken by Kendallan. Murray again, good defensive set to start with from Leinster, but a little bit of forward momentum from Munster there, and Klein does a decent job of moving Munster forward again. Here's Carberry. Middle of the park, it's the captain, Jack O'Donoghue. Murray, Carberry, better from Munster. Got their hands on the ball, getting through phases themselves. Five minutes into this game, and it's already got a little bit of a ping about it, doesn't it? Ball is up. Murray caught in possession. The ball secured for Munster. Farrell and Keith Earls. Earls Not put held. to ground. Munster Not trying now. to get a hold of the Contest. ball. A little bit slow coming back. Stay Munster off. had Stay a off. hand in there. Ahern. Counter is 22 good. 22 is still where Munster are, and Leinster eventually picked them off, and then there's a penalty for a high tackle. Accidental, no doubt about that, by Klein yeah. on Thomas Clarkson. Really good defensive set by Leinster. In fairness to Munster, they're putting a lot of pressure on, playing flat on the game, and good carry from Number Klein, four. good carry from Jack O'Donoghue, but eventually here, you just see that counter rook from Joe McCarthy. So much talk about Ross Maloney over the last, last week, and rightly so, but let's not forget, Joe McCarthy is somebody who's been earmarked as a late, um, late push to get into this into this tour, and he's got a lot of qualities about him, particularly around that physicality he brings. Harry Byrne. Cut in the grass in the middle. And then Jack Klein. No, no, the cut is the middle. Give us half. Here's Sean Cronin retiring, of course, at the end of the season. Last dance against Munster. He's had so many. In fact, of course, he played for Munster for a while and for Connacht also. That's off his foot. What a servant he's been to Irish rugby. Taken on by Harry Byrne and then Counters. Rory O'Loughlin. Of course, off to Exeter First next season. Five, second man knocked. Munster penalised again at the feet. breakdown. Jack O'Donoghue off his First feet, says Frank is fine, Murphy. Second yeah. is not. And look at that tactic of, of putting a lot of pressure through the centre of the rook, the counter rook, was a huge part of why they were so successful at frustrating to lose. But you got to get it right. We're just seeing the hands from Lencer. Good read here by Chris Farrell on Rory Lachlan, who, like James Lowe, has a license to drift off his wing. We just see here Farrell actually wins the space, but it's just the next guy, Jack O'Donoghue, who just comes off his feet. And it's a very kickable penalty. And, you know, be a dream start for Lencer if, if Harry Byrne can knock this over. For this guy. Adam Byrne in the foreground there, stripping off the tracksuit top. One of a couple the of players guy, for Leinster are off to Connacht next year. Peter Dooley, uh, another. Well. And also on the bench, David Hawkshaw. Yeah, He's He's going there. to Connacht as well next season. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny situation for, for some of these Leinster players. This may be their last game for Leinster. Looking at Sean Cronin there, we know he's, you know, he's not in the first two hookers uh, choice with, with Sheen and, and Kelleher. But maybe this is his last, his, his last dance, and uh, what a career he's had, and how he'd love to go out with a with a big win. Yeah, well, Lachlan looks okay, and Harry Off Byrne. Feet. Well, no question of going for the post towards the 22. Not a terrific kick either. Carberry guilty of not getting enough distance for Munster. Harry Byrne equally for Leinster. Safety first. Max Deegan claims the ball for Leinster and it's with Sean Cronin at the back of that mall. Oh no, three. They have control of it. Use it. Foley and now into midfield. Frawley around the corner, but it's really well read. I think it was Goggin, no, was it? Conway who got there, Straight off feet. and off the feet again from Munster, guilty of just giving away cheap penalties at the breakdown. Number 12, straight off feet. Goggin off his feet. Shot called. Need yeah. to be more positive, arrive up please. I was surprised Harry didn't, arrive up. didn't go for post the last time, but he'll take this, it's, it's much uh, more straightforward for him, but again, the intent in that mall, I know they had to play away from him, but just, showing that they've got the power to mix it with this, with this Munster 8, who are much more experienced and very impressive start from, from Leinster. Thanks, Brian. That's two at the break, then. So then, Harry Byrne came into this game with a 60% success 
record from the tee in the URC this season. Missed the conversion of the opening try, but that's far more straightforward than the results he would have expected and Leinster would have expected. Eight and a half minutes gone, they have eight points. Munster yet to register a point. Carberry then with the restart for Munster. Really nice kick from Joey Carberry. Gives everybody an opportunity to get there, but it's controlled by Lencer. Not controlled, though, by Clarkson and Munster turned the ball over. Nice little basketball offload, and then another one from Witcherly and the kick in behind, and Keith Earls has it and comes back in field. Tackled by Foley there from Murray. Better from Munster. Bit of tempo, bit of intensity, but Leinster go about stopping them in their tracks through the tackle of Max Deegan. Murray once again. Ahern. Carberry. Leinster up quickly. Carberry goes in behind. Watched all the way and dealt with by Jordan Larmer. Good fullback play and a little bit of a little bit of argy bargy as the great man would have called it back in the day. It wouldn't be an Irish derby without one, Royal, but lovely kick from Carby and from Murray before that to try and create that space, but good cover by Larmer across. We saw some lovely hand on here from Kendall and, and Tom Ahern, you know, on transition. Just want to get that ball to space and you see there Murray, he just finds Earls. And Earl's so Second dangerous coming back off a touchline. That Leinster defensive line is up so quickly. Munster, last couple of times, kick from Carberry, kick from Connor Murray, just to make them check and wonder back, if the ball is always going to go to hand. Niall Scannell. I'll give you one chance, Leinster, to open up in your looking front Looking for man. a gap. Open up in your front man. Is the referee. Scannell encouraging in, Leinster, giving a warning. Great opportunity this for Munster to launch something, transfer it towards the back of the line out, but Leinster back, shot please, no. Munster down before they can get up any sort of head of steam. About eight metres away from the Leinster line now. Taken on by Jean Klein. Ken Dillon. Murray. Farrell. Good carry, Connor Murray. Back your side. Advantage being played now to Munster. I was Free play, offside. opportunity to get their first points on the board. Klein drives at the line, but three blue shirts meet him. We're on a bad ditch. That's fine. Still All advantage being played. Kendall in again. Ryan Baird holds him up. Ball is presented. Murray will get his hands on it. Not the cleanest of ball, but there for Carberry and there for the Munster back line. And out wide is the number eight, O'Donoghue. Jack O'Donoghue in the corner. Great response from Munster. The TMO will not be needed. The referee and his assistant have made the decision. They don't need to go to the TMO. And O'Donoghue has Munster's first try. Yeah, and he's been outstanding all season. When they needed him, he's really stood up, and that's a great finish. Some lovely play by Munster, really good balance. Great ball by Carberry, out the back to Keith Earls, off his left hand, 25-metre pass. And despite the effort to stop him in the corner, they just can't stop the power of Dunhu. Munster be delighted with that. They just settle into their rhythm, bounce back straight away from that early score. and um, It's shown that the, the wit in their attacking game, which maybe hadn't been there early in the season, but they've really found a nice right. balance to their game now. Work, Cormac Foley, the man who tried to put a man mountain that is Jack O'Donoghue on his backside, but he just couldn't do it. O'Donoghue, great finish from Munster's captain and Carberry with the opportunity to make this a one point game. And that's exactly what Munster needed to do. They needed that next score. They've got it. That one won't find the target so as with Leinster just the five Leinster leaded by eight points to five 
Again, we just see that pass, but I love the way Munster, with the penalty advantage, you know, they, they weren't content just to play a couple of plays with the forwards. They pulled the trigger really early and really accurate passing from both Carberry and Earls to put a Donahue over. Harry Byrne goes long with the restart. Joey Carberry, last line of defence for Munster, has a little look up and he's hurried into That's that right. kick after a decent kick chase from Leinster. That's a good clearance though, good clearance from the boot of Joey Carberry. Absolutely, yeah, it was a good kick from Harry Byrne. He made Carberry turn and obviously they're hoping to get pressure on him and, and probably start with a line out a little bit further Stay up the there. field, but Joey gets a great exit and Leinster, you know, are back to pretty much where they started, but obviously have the throw now. And their line out sh strike attacks have been really excellent this year. If you're joining us late, the voice of Bernard Jackman at the Aviva Stadium in this Bad final on. group or regular season game in the URC. Advantage over. Good carry from Niall Scannell gets Munster up inside the Leinster half. Connor Murray looks busy. Fully dialed in. Well, is there any other way in a derby like this? Chasing. Is Conway, the ball will bounce to Scannell. There's Greenfield in front of him. Niall Scannell just didn't have the legs to get there. And is there a hand that forces it into touch? Munster are saying it was done intentionally. Scannell, well, the blue sea parted in front of him. He just didn't have the pace to get there. We thought it went backwards. That's not going to be the decision. Jack O'Donoghue not And he didn't intentionally hit into touch, right? You see it here again. It's, it's the handling error from Frawley. It's going to be a line out you know, here, guys. Good tackle by Carberry. And from this, I love the way Murray he puts a boxing up but quickly. He doesn't wait to get a set. That means Leicester haven't readjusted yes. in the backfield. And, and it's great pressure. I think it was, it was Conway who's brilliant in the air and, and Scanlon chasing up. Good cover tackle by Harry Byrne. He sees Scott Penny. In fairness, he bats it down. He doesn't mean to tap it out there. But again, really good transition Wade attack from, from Munster. <laughs> okay, number of things here. Open up. I. I can't clearly see who's the halfback because you need to form. So come in, Finine, please. What an opportunity for Munster as we head towards 16 minutes, five metres short of the Leinster line. Scannell, Klein, line out over. and the mall. Scannell at the back. One stop, Munster. Advantage, side entry eight. Advantage being played. Connor Murray has another free play. Stay. Push. Leinster in at the side. Carberry just about right, held on to the pass from Dan Goggin. On. Still on advantage. Murray. Kendall, it. good carry from the young man, sets it up. And it's a pick and go. And what a go! Mike Haley! Leinster soft in the centre of that breakdown. Haley, the quickest to spot it. The pick and go, and it's a second try. And it is game on at the Aviva Stadium. Yeah, excellent by Munster. Two red zone entries, two tries, and again, it's just Kandelan just getting over that gain line. Just two metres makes a big difference. Leinster flying around the corner. It's Ryan Baird. He's trying, to, he's trying to fold. There's a gap through the middle, and Haley. The two players have been probably on top form for Munster over the last two or three months. Haley and Jack O'Donoghue, who are the two men who have scored the tries. And Carberry with the most straightforward of conversion attempts is good. And Munster hit the front, and they will have got a fright in the opening three minutes. Leinster were absolutely flying, but Munster have found their way into this game with purpose and some Go, amount of ability, and that from Haley gives them the lead that the last six or seven minutes the performance deserves. Absolutely, yeah, and they've just really capitalised on two handling errors from Leinster. The first one was from Clarkson, just outside his 22, eventually leads to a try, and there we saw a good hit on Frawley, ball goes forward, and they just play with tempo. They're trying to copy what Ireland do, what Leinster do, and are starting to do it quite well. Fourth try of the URC this season for Mike Haley as Keith Earls gathers the ball for Munster. Use it! Flush that, flush that, son. Stay. Use it, nine. Downfield from Conor Murray. Not surprisingly, worth noting that there isn't a huge travelling support here for Munster. And well, after the efforts and the magnificence of what showed up here for the quarter-final of the Champions Cup, you can understand uh, to do it twice in a couple of weeks is too much of an ask. There are a good few red jerseys around, but 
as you'd expect, this Leinster home game significantly outnumbered and very much has a home game feel for Leinster about it. Ryan Baird gathers the ball. Uh, Leinster try and get that ball moving. Tell you what, the first 18 minutes of this game have absolutely flown by. It's been eventful. Here's Max Deegan. Carberry's put himself about in defence in that opening quarter. Continues to do so. Off the eight, leave. And Cormac Foley, the baptism of fire for him, just his second start, the former St. Jared's schoolboy. That one didn't go to hand from Rob Russell, winning just his fifth Leinster cap, the 23-year-old. And that's a little loose from Munster, but they've regathered the ball, albeit with a couple of blue shirts on their back. Ahern. Tackle from Foley Last and Russell as well. Monster ball back. Murray had a little look at Carberry, went for Jan Klein instead. Good handling across that back line. Stop nine! Andrew Conway kicks it on, not his best effort. O'Loughlin well positioned to deal with it. And into touch it goes. Yeah, good cover from Rory at Auckland. Larmer had come up to close the gate as Munster went wide and he, he worked he worked his way across, gets a good touch, but Munster's defence has been... It's early. really settled down now and they're starting to get into the passing lane. We saw Rob Russell there trying to maybe an overly ambitious offload, but Munster are focused on stopping Leinster, play that game on their feet and stopping them keeping the ball alive, making them go to, go to contact, creating rooks. It's remarkable in the last two to three years in particular, Burton, isn't it just how much the skill sets, the, the passing, the crispness and accuracy of passing, no matter the number on your back, the ball handling across both sides and, and deep into each squad, it's just improving and improving and improving. Yeah, they, look, they got to be good athletes, but they also got to be footballers now, and as you say, it's it's 1-15, to 15 and we've already seen, you know, some really good skills on show. Backwards. Everybody misjudged that one, and uh, it's picked up and picked up well by John Ryan on the retreat. Murray to O'Donoghue, captain dips the shoulder and into no. the opposing captain, Ed Byrne, who made the tackle. Use it! Just a little bit of zip gone out of the game in the last 90 seconds or so, Andrew Conway. Somehow comes away with that, he is masterful. Uh, the kick chase, Andrew Conway, Klein, a little bit loose, Murray gathers it up, Goggin, one of those passes that cuts out so many defenders, Goggin again, and then Witcherly. Handling is good for Munster. Carberry just didn't get it away, and it bounces up for Scott Penny, who, if he'd gathered it, would have got away. Advantage being played to Munster. Well, it was being played for a knock forwards. Jordan Larmer as a scamper across and just about gets away from one. And then two, three, and four. Jordan Larmer back to his sparkling best with ball in hand. Little wizard when he gets the opportunity. Ed Byrne skips away from a tackle from Josh Witchley. Osborne. Frawley, great line from Frawley. Leinster buzzing again. Foley, Foley, wonderful. That's why oh. you don't kick the ball to Jordan Larmer. Wow, what, it was a great kick from Goodell in the space was there. But Larmer just gets him back on the front foot. His first game of fullback this season, and he just gives him that spark. Just where Munster was starting to look confident. That's a sucker blow and a great try by Leinster. Foley. His support line, we just see it here. He shouldn't get out of there. Just, you know, he, he has to go lateral, but then he goes forward. That's the key, he gets inside Scannell, goes around John Ryan. Okay, he's running the front five forwards, but he's making him look stupid. And then from here, this is the ball. This late change of angle. Wow, look at it open up. Brilliant angle from, from behind. And then at a link play, great pass from Fo uh, to Foley, and he gets in under the post. And Harry Byrne adds an additional two. This is, well, Terrific to watch. But yes. what about that from Frawley? And it was the angle that he ran from the pass from Osborne. And then Foley, like all good scrum halves, 
Let's go, guys. Yeah, well, Sorry, but... No, 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 it, just, it, was, it was absolutely beautiful because Osborne was going laterally and, and just at the last second he, he came back against the grain, ran square and a hole opened up for him and, yeah, this game has been brilliant. Four tries already. I had the nerve to say it, it lost its spark for 90 seconds. And we're just catching a breath. Second wind. Off we go again from the right boot of Joey Carberry. Hard to believe that we could be in for this level of intensity and entertainment for 80 minutes. But hey, first 24 have been worth the admission fee for those that are here. Hope you're enjoying it as much at home. Osborne and Frawley. Conway, big tackle on O'Loughlin, and it needed to be. The force of the tackle just threw the pass off from O'Loughlin. Had it not, right, set. Leinster were in behind again. Yeah, there was, just, there was space there for a second. It comes from a good carry from McCarthy. That little pop off the ground is gold. Baird gets him on the front foot, and then the Munster defence were short. But in fairness to Conway, he makes that read. You see him here? Makes that read and makes it hard for O'Loughlin. He has to give the no-look pass, because in his peripheral vision, he, he knows Conway's going to come in and take his ribs out. So, uh, really good defence from Conway. Worth going back also, Scott Penny. That probably looks a lot worse than no, it actually no, is. That's and they'll like. patch him up and he'll be okay to continue, said the professional right. doctor from 70 <laughs> metres away. Um, I, I was just going to say on Andrew Conway, his, he, he is not the tallest man in the world, but we see him do it week in, week out for both province and then when he gets to play for his country as well. His ability in the air to chase those kicks and come away with the ball, and if he doesn't come away with it, to cause an issue for the defence. He really, it is an art form for oh, him. Yeah, there, there was a brilliant take in the air there from a Conor Murray box kick where he had no right to, to get there. And, you know, he, it's his first game since since January. He's come back from a knee injury and he looks just looks so sharp. And he's an attacking weapon. That's why people say, oh, why do Conor Murray and Munster box kick a lot? But if you're box kicking down the right-hand side of the field and Andrew Conway is fit and available, you're going to get great reward out of that. And uh, it's a tactic that's definitely worth using when you have someone of his ability. As you said, he's not tall, but his timing is phenomenal and his, his, his leap and his that's bravery. That's, that's you know, it's a, it takes a lot of bravery to go chase those line. kicks. No, that's the line of touch. That's the middle of the line. Scott Penny, I think, is going to be OK to continue. Nice shot there just a moment ago of four Leinster players on an evening off, no doubt, with an eye on uh, next no, no. week's Number three. Champions Cup final. Four. Robbie Henshaw and Jack Conan and yes. Hugo Keane. Bring in Red. There's Gary Ringrose as well, enjoying, what is it? Pretty balmy evening in the Aviva Stadium. Conor Murray. Joey Carberry, Munster, all sorts of movement, and it created a little bit of space inside the far shoulder of the last Lencer defender. Murray again, Carberry. Literally runs into Ryan Baird. Won't be the first time we'll say that either today. Oh, hoping that they stay fit for maybe the next decade. Two terrific young talents in Wycherley and Baird. Here's Jack O'Donoghue bang on the head for Kieran Frawley, who's in a little bit of distress, and the medical staff immediately with him. Carberry in at nine. And pop off to Goggin, yeah. just when he was trying to place it, lost control of it, it bounced up, and Max Deegan Use it. was the one to... Profit for Leinster. Frawley still down with Music. two Leinster medical staff with him now. You see him top left of your screen. Frank Murphy has a little look over. Mike Haley. Ooh, that's a big hit from Ed Byrne and Scott Penny. We're going to have to stop for that player, Leinster. Yeah, I'm not surprised be because stop. it was too close to him. Kieran Frawley, that is, and Frank Murphy, I think, got a sense it was a bit more serious than he had first thought. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think as, as that ball was in the air, he just got a look at it, and you could see the um, the body shape of the physio just holding Kieran Frawley's neck, and um, I just hope it's not too serious. Just see it here on the contact. Yeah, I think there's a head clash a, maybe with someone else's knee on the other yeah, side. It was a knee to the head, I think. Well, we thought Adam Byrne might be entering the game after about 10 minutes or so with 
Oh, the lock -up into 12. took a bank. Uh, he's definitely coming in now because Kieran Frawley will not be coming back on the evidence of what we've seen. Most likely, O'Loughlin will move into the centre and Byrne will go to the wing. Yeah, Adam Byrne will go on the, on the right wing. And, uh, it looks like right, no, left wing. And then, uh, yeah, Rory O'Loughlin will go to the centre where he's a very accomplished player. We just hope Frawley is OK. He's, he's such a talented player. Even in the, in the first 26 minutes, we've seen glimpses of, of what he can do. Uh, he's just been very unlucky with injuries. Um, but yet, he's, he's already accomplished quite a lot in his career. But, just hope he's okay. Yeah, Leo Cullen looking on. Luke McGrath. Having a little chat and now realises he's on the big screen. It's a great position to be in, though, being able to rest all those players this weekend, prepare for La Rochelle. La Rochelle, earlier on, they beat Stade Francais, but they had to go quite strong. Interesting, Will Skelton came off the bench for the last 13 minutes. We were told he wasn't going to be available next weekend, but uh, I'd say he's someone at O'Gara, and, and La Rochelle will, will obviously, if he got through that today, will use as a trying impact player. He had a great game against Leinster last year. Dan Levy. Uh, Still part of the squad, obviously retiring. What a player he was. Well, I'm delighted to see Kieran Frawley get up and make his way off the pitch under his own steam because from the moment the contact was made, he was in some distress. But thankfully, able to make his way to the sideline. Strong space stability. Frank Murphy has just yeah. said it 26 minutes into this game. First scrum, I'd said it was a good game so far, but it couldn't be if there's I mean, no scrums. <laughs> <laughs> Delighted, we just need a collapse here now. Just to yeah, crouch scrum has been. Uh, pretty successful weapon for both these sides through the URC. 94% success rate for Leinster, 96% success rate for Munster. Let's just try and get a little squeeze on it. All coming towards me. And you got your collapse scrum. Well done. Yeah, with real contest there, you can see both packs we'll go forward from anybody looking to lay down a marker. Scrum, red ball. Josh Witcherly's had a pretty good month, hasn't he? Really good month. And when you look at the age profile of a lot of the loose heads, you know, behind the the, pec, the the first and second choice, which is which has been Porter and Keane Healy, he's a young gun who maybe has that margin of, of, of progression ahead of ahead of him, uh, and could certainly push his way into the, that tour to New Zealand. I think. Josh Whitley wearing number one with the scrum cap over on that Crouch. far side for Munster. It's Connor Murray. Bind. Ninety-six international caps for Connor Murray. Spring gauge number three. Number three. And Bring after it. all that, we'll get a free kick for Munster. And don't be surprised if they recall the scrum. Yeah, well absolutely. Sometimes it's seen as a, as a sign of uh, sign of weakness, space, not no. to go Next for another scrum. Day. You know, so a lot of teams have put up Gary Owens in that situation or tap and go, but four pack like to have a chance to show some dominance, particularly when you've won the free kick. If you can show a little bit of dominance here, the referee's more likely to give you the penalty. Crouch! Bind! Set! Stay square. Stay there. Use it! Well done, who eventually to Connor Murray. That pace, Carberry also. Munster eating up the ground in front of them as Earls and Haley combined to get them all the way up to the Leinster 22. That was a really strong set off the scrum. Kendall and though runs into tackle from Ed Byrne. O'Donoghue. Tackle from O'Loughlin. Uh, another player down and in a little bit of trouble on the Munster side. 
Just can't identify as a pendulum. I think it might be. Here's Keith Earls. And Earls gets the pass away, but it's knocked forward, and we will go back. Confirmation it is Alex Kendall. Squad. Knock on advantage was over. Couldn't give it he to was there. very yeah, slow yeah. to move when he hit the ground, but he has now bounced back up again. It was a lovely backline attack strike from, from Munster. They all swept That's late. You just see them here stacked behind the scrum. Decoy line with Goggin, decoy line with Chris Farrell. Earls just puts Hayden's space and just get 15 yards over the gain line, get in the front foot. But it, the intensity from this hit here from Josh Murphy, Joe McCarthy, they're just coming up looking to hunt him. Obviously, knock it on. You know, good play by Earls. It was a lovely offload in that from Thomas O'Hearn again, just a one handed offload. He's, that's a big part of his game, his ability to, to throw the pass that no one expects. Now, we said it's been a big couple of months for Josh Wisherly. It's been a big couple of months for this young man as well. No, oh, he's been incredible. Um, he's just, every test that's been put in front of him, he's just stepped up to that mark and he just looks so at home. And obviously, you know, he came on the scene. Obviously, people in Munster knew a lot about him through the, through the schools. But it was last year's Irish in the 20s campaign where he was captain. He's just outstanding. And, you know, it's not an easy step up to Champions Cup level, particularly, you know, against teams like Toulouse. To go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Leinster. And, uh, yeah, Munster have had a history of always having good back rows, but he looks like someone who could have a huge career. Yeah, it's going to be your score. Just where it is. Change, of course, of plenty, not alone on the playing squad side, but on the coaching tickets of both these teams. Significant change, of course, at Munster with Johan van Grand moving on and Graham Rountree taking on the head coach's role. Andy Keriaku and Mike Prendergast are coming in. Rumours that maybe Dennis Leamy uh, is currently with Leinster might meander his way back down the road to Munster. And, of course, Leinster change in their backroom staff coming as well with assistant Felipe Conte Comi announcing during the week that he's heading back very understandably to take up a role with the Argentinian national team as assistant to Michael Checa. So there'll be change in the Leinster backroom staff as well and in, and in many ways that's not necessarily a bad thing from Leinster's perspective either as much as Contepomi has been outstanding at a fresh voice every now and then yeah. in a stable coaching Fine. ticket oh yeah that's the beauty of it you know actually Leinster will need two because Leamy Leamy will go to Munster as defence coach and have to replace him and then bring in someone to replace Felipe but uh, with, with Leo and Guy Easterby and Stuart Stop. staying on you know and Robin McBride staying on they're in a really good place Mike Haley to the air. Monster's second try scorer this evening. If you're just joining us, Penny and Foley for Leinster, O'Donoghue and Haley, the try scorers for Munster. Kick downfield from Jordan Armour, but well watched and well positioned from Andrew right. Conway. I know. Here is Cormac Foley, and now Harry Byrne. Haley under this one and gets the pass away to Keith Earls, who accelerates into the gap, but watched all the way. O'Loughlin, who's now in the center, makes the tackle on Carberry. Penny on John Ryan. Crucially, from Munster's perspective, the ball is still with them. Witcherly. Use it! Kick from Conor Murray, maybe not got the distance on that he would have wanted, but back on the Leinster side it goes. Klein did well to stop Harry Byrne. That ball is loose and out, surely. Leave it. And they get the penalty. Ten, Munster. off feet, playing the ball. Harry Byrne's the one who's penalised. Off feet, playing the ball. Yeah, he thought he saw a bit of a, a gap, obviously, from that tap back from Ryan Baird, but that gap closed pretty quickly and he, he was not back in the tackle. And, I think it was a little bit loose with his ball presentation, and he just he realised he was going to pop out and just tried to try to stop it with his hand, which is obviously illegal. And uh, yeah, I guess once that's a great kick from, from Murray. This game has just ebbed and flowed, and it's been the next week in in the final. Fine. Well, the word coming from Leinster during the week was that Stay there. Tag Furlong was right on course there, to be Trey. okay for next week, but well, thought Will Skelton wasn't going to be seen, and we know that's going to change. Murray, that one wasn't anyone in particular, but it's controlled with the foot of Niall Scannell, who 
reclaims possession, but it just got a little scrappy from Munster. They lost their shape for a second, and if you do that, and you get isolated, which Scanwell did. Leinster will have you. Yeah, absolutely. And the first one was the Cronin penalty came from a, a mall that they didn't break out properly. And there, that was just a pass from where he went to ground. Munster weren't really sure where the next phase was going to be. And Scanlon just got a little bit isolated. Good turnover from, from Joe McCarthy, who's looked really lively, to be fair. You just see here, his pass goes to ground. You know. Just that momentum loss. Loss, yeah. And then just don't deal with McCarthy with a clean... Must need to be more aggressive there and get rid of him earlier. It's not enough straight. Advantage not straight. Advantage not straight is the message from Frank Murphy and Munster have that advantage. Advantage over. Which is now done. Lovely pass from Carberry to Farrell. Just cut out a couple of Leinster defenders. Gave Farrell an opportunity to go on the outside shoulder of his man, which he did really well. There's Josh Witcherly to set it up. And now Carberry. Crossfield, not his finest. Yeah. Alex. What? It's a strong advantage over. Alex, Alex, do not push it into a player on the ground. Push it into a player on the ground. There's a bit of wasted possession there from, from Munster. Obviously, the ball wasn't straight at the line-up, but the referee Numbers, was playing please. an advantage. Unfortunately, the advantage Six is over, calls. as you said. Great pass out of Chris Farrell. And he's really enjoying his tussle with Osborne. He's being aggressive, he's using his fend. Um, he obviously sees him as a threat, you know, for the next five or six years or longer. And uh, yeah, it's, Carby just need to be a little bit more after that kick. Let's go to Pack that ball and Broke away. head towards the Munster 22. And the neck muscles will tell you after 35 minutes, we've been looking a lot towards the Leinster 22 Hockey rather than down. the Munster 22, albeit that when Leinster have gone down there, as they so often do, they come away with points. And they'll look for more before the break. Here's Harry Byrne trying to step inside. Jan Klein did a good job to hold on to him. Here is Osborne, but his kick is down the throat of Keith Earls, who immediately looks nope, up, but I think he was inside. trying to keep that one in play rather than fine touch but he had to hit it immediately and just lost that bit of control because there was nobody at home for Leinster well, Leinster would be absolutely relieved that didn't stay in for sure Keith saw that space Leinster no one in the backfield because they're full on attack mode loose kick in fairness and probably must be disappointed didn't get more out of that it would be a really interesting foot race if, if that ball had stayed in Red stay Taken in the second row by Josh Murphy. One Sets start. Leinster up, but Munster have done well on that ball. And now O'Loughlin, from a kind of standing start, gets back to the safety of numbers. Good contest. Use it now. Foley. Box kick is easily dealt with by Keith Earls, whose pass wasn't the most sympathetic, but it has given Munster an opportunity to try and go wide. And just couldn't get it across the line. 14, was it? Carberry, little kick for Haley to chase, but watch by a lock. Line. We're going to go Before back with a deliberate bar, knockdown from a Leinster hand. Will be the yeah. referees 14. read of this yeah. and Rob Russell 14. is going to the sin bin yeah yellow card deliver knocking and in fairness I know it's a long way out but Munster had numbers there it was a really good attacking opportunity nice play by Earls Earls here he just gets that pass and that's the, that's the key pass there you see Rob Russell he's facing three men four men actually and he just comes in yeah yeah he was just sloppy technique to be honest but he deserves to get yellow for that a big opportunity for Munster now, just before half time. Crowd feel that was unfair, and well, a home crowd when they see that, you can understand it. Fact is, he did stop Munster from going out wide. Had they gone That's outside him, they were going to make serious ground. Yeah, look at it. It's not that blatant, and I see what a crowd are, but you can't do it. You've got to be careful with your with your hand movement there, and particularly when you're stressed. 
and there's an overlap in front of you, you've got to be much more accurate than that. 15 against 14, probably till about eight minutes into the second half. Munster's advantage, yeah, that that they don't take advantage on uh, that occasion. And, and Ryan Nugent. Still waiting. Immaculate timing, Ross. Thank you for that. Just about ready to go at the start of the second half. And remember, it's the second half. Well, it's just I'll so important to the rest of Munster's season. There's no getting away from it. They need two points out of this. However they get them, whether that's a draw or a losing bonus point with four try bonus points, that would give them two points as well. They need those two points to get up to fourth and therefore give themselves a home quarter-final. They need a bonus point win outside, outside. to get into Music. second place and then have a pathway to a Stop. home semi-final. That, at the moment, feels like it's a long, long way away. For Leinster, well, they already know they're going to be the number one seeds. They have a home quarter-final. They will have a home semi-final as well. But hey, Munster what? set about this with absolute belief that they could get that bonus point win and it's fallen into the lap of Conor Murray and everybody stood and looked at each other including myself and Bernard referee said play on and Munster have their third try yeah but of course a good area pressure really good running bomb from Haley. just gets into the eye line of Osborne is in the backfield and then it's just a bit, a bit chaotic Murray's Back following up and does well to score the try dream start for Munster and it comes again from that little bit of chaos but they're there they're, they're, they're working hard off the ball to capitalise on it what a start to the second half Connor Murray in after a minute Larmer's off on another one of those runs of his Jordan Larmer oh, almost away almost without his shorts ball up away now Red Leinster still have it leave it for Jordan Larmer, he's been out for a while, but boy, does he look sharp. Tackle release! Play on before Let's the tackle. come away with it. Here's Ryan. Steps inside, Osborne puts him to ground. Okay. And Conor Murray in. Uh, well, the referee is going to go back. He's been advised of okay. a high tackle. High tackle, red nine. Conor Murray, yes. the guilty party. Let's see if we can pick it out Let's here. But Jordan Larmer... You just can't let him go on the lateral arcs. You got to get more pressure inside, push him towards the touchline. And it, but it's great to see him in full flight. I mean, we, we've really missed him. Even though Leinster obviously have so, Hugo Keenan's been brilliant, but I think fullback is Jordan's best position. Even though he's obviously a quality winger, but he's two sides to attack, and that's obviously you know well picked up by the TMO. Just a little bit of contact around Josh Murphy's head there from Conor Murray. No, nothing malicious in it, but uh, yeah, good work by the officials. And Larmer, we there know this, will be so keen for Andy Farrell to remember. We if got if the end, okay? You dare say that Andy Farrell wouldn't have forgotten who Jordan Larmer was and what he was capable of, but he has definitely fallen down that pecking order by the ability and performance of other players while he's been out injured. Such are the vagaries of international and provincial rugby right now in this country. Absolutely, he's only 20, he's 25 in June. I mean, he's still a very young man. He's achieved a lot already, but it's just great to see him. And hopefully, he gets a, a run, a run now without picking up any knocks. Harry Byrne with the penalty, which he knocks over. And Leinster's 14 players are back to within a point. It's Leinster 18, yeah, Munster 19. Looks wrong to me. I think it's Munster 19, 1918. Yeah. And the referee just checking it's the score with his TMO, and I've understood, yes. I was wondering, why is he doing that? He's, if you look up at the scoreboard over on the far side, it hasn't moved on. It has Leinster 15, Munster 7. And Frank Murphy just checking the score. It is definitely Leinster 18, Munster 19. Use it. Wait! Oh, no. Carver slip, but picked himself up. Gets a hold of it, and it'll show and almost got away. Tackle was made by O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin's slow to get back on his feet. <laughs> Penalty Munster. And a little bit of extras. Fan about what happened. Ed, go back. Playing the nine. And that's the risk, but... 
counter rooking like that, you know, Chuck McCarty, he, he punches through, gets through the space, but you cannot touch the nine. You cannot touch the nine, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just got to have real discipline. Let's There's, go. And unfortunately, Joe just gets a little bit over exuberant there. Watch one. Okay. Joey Carberry will go down the line. It's 1980. Uh, I can't, I've asked. So. In the stands, as you'd expect on a night like this evening. Just see here, he bounces back up. Yeah. I think he'll feel that was out. Yeah. Unless you're going to go to the bench early. Unless you are going to go to the bench early. We'll come to that in a moment. I don't think they'll be involved before this line out. Niall Scannell and Munster deep inside the Leinster 22, taken oh. by Witcherly. And Scannell into the back, and Munster trying to get that goal on a roll. Over to 15. Use it. Stopped in its tracks by Leinster. Earls comes in off his wing and has the ball now. Penny makes the tackle. Earls presents it again. Here's Connor Murray, and it's the big men being asked to an carry. Well, is there an advantage? There may be more than an advantage for the knock-on. Time off. I'm not sure that that was no, no, no. the same as Time off. the yellow card Time's that off. Rob Russell already got. Let's hear the referee. Yeah. Ryan, just put that on screen for me, please. I want to check if that's a deliberate knock-on or not. We'll check the knock-on to see if it's a deliberate knock-on. Stand by. Brian McNeese, the television match that's official. Great. Just checking if it's deliberate, lads. Yeah. Rob Russell. There he is, number 14, just back from his yellow card in the last three seconds. Will, will Lancer be at 15 or back down to 14 immediately? Get eyes on us. I, uh, we'll deal with it, but I don't think so at the moment. I just want to see what it's better to do. Okay, Frank, here's the first time. Number four, blue. Number four blue is Joe McCarthy. Yeah, it is a deliberate knock on, but it's a penalty only, right? I guess number yeah. four. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't prevent the line break, loads of numbers around. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be a penalty against you. So, it doesn't prevent the line the, break. The immediate right question I'm going to okay, ask, and I'm sure people at home are asking, is if it's a deliberate we'll knock on and, and it's a penalty, what's penalty the difference between that deliberate. and the yellow card at penalty the end of the first half? I think we heard Frank Murphy say there's lots of defenders around, so he's. He's given him the benefit of the doubt that it wasn't going to lead to a try, yeah. whereas the Rob Russell situation, Leinster were down numbers, there was an opportunity to, to score. I know it is <laughs> it's confusing, uh, and it really, I don't think it should matter. You know, a deliberate knock-on should be a yellow card. Um, we're just waiting on you, big man. But I think, look, he missed it live, he went back and checked it, so at least sure once you get the okay. reward for the, f the foul play. And in the interest of balance, because I guarantee there are Leinster fans at home going, Neither of those were a deliberate knock-on. They were both happening in the, in the act of tackling. Yeah, but you've you got to be so careful with where you lead with your hands, okay. you, you know. I'll just put time on it. You've got to keep your hands tight to your, to your chest, kind of like a boxer stance, and then okay. extend them when you're about to make the impact. Fortunately there for Joe, he just put... You're taking too big a risk by, by going into a tackle like that. Jason Jenkins is into the game for Munster, the South African international, one cap South African international back in 2018 against Wales. He's also leaving Munster to join Leinster during the summer as Joey Carberry adds the very straightforward three points for Munster and they stretch out that lead to four points again. Leinster 18, Munster 22 and now change is coming for Leinster in the front row, McKee and Healy. There's McKee, you just saw Healy. And I see Clarkson coming off as well, Peter Dooley is in. So full change in the front row, there's Dooley. May well be the last time we see him in the blue of Leinster. As he's off to Connacht. Ryan Baird's gone after this one with purpose and Leinster have won the restart. Keane Healy gets his hands on the ball. Not forward. 
by Josh Murphy. Munster looking to turn defence into attack immediately without that Leinster defensive line set. Chris Farrell uh, goes after it, but Adam Byrne calmly and coolly grabs a hold of it and looks to stretch their legs. Foley can see that now Munster are out of shape defensively, and that's a really good kick. He's got the bounce of the ball, but the accuracy to get it there in the first place was out of the top drawer from the young scrum half. Oh, that's brilliant. I mean, you know, you'd expect an experienced nine to, to see that space, but he just read it, saw it was, the backfield was open, and then just pulled the trigger and just judges that perfectly. Big moment. Good play by Adam Byrne, in fairness, to get away from, uh, from Keith Earls and, and open up that space but with a midfield rook. Always find it remarkable to see these young players come into what are big pressure cooker derbies and perform so well. Foley continuing in that vein. Leinster crowd very much urging them on. At the back is McKee, and McKee felt like he might have got there, but he hasn't. Oh, the referee says he didn't get there because the mall was dragged down. And it is a penalty try, the full seven, McKee. Well, he won't get the try credited to him, but he was going to get there in the view of the referee. It's a penalty try, and worse than that, Niall Scannell has gone in the bin. He shrugs the shoulders, he can't believe it. Munster can see the try. Yeah, a well-constructed ball by Leinster, really well built, going forward dynamically. It's very hard to see where it collapsed there, obviously. Frank Murphy was clear, it's, it's the scan we've probably seen from this angle a little bit better. Yeah, he just comes in there. A lot of bodies, in fairness, Leinster had got it going forward dynamically. And Frank Murphy, you know, the offensive referees go, not go uh, under the post straight away, but uh, good decision. And obviously Leinster now have, have a chance against 14 men to try and build a score. Yeah, 14 against 15 the other way now for 10 minutes. Leinster have had their period when that man was in Outside. the sin bin. Well, Scannell now Calling in the, the sin bin for Munster. 25 points to 22 in Leinster's favour. The good news from Munster's perspective, they already have three Very tries lucky. and they only trail by three points right now. And there's a long way to go on this one. Joey Carberry. Haley offers support and is used and rushing up Josh Murphy. Couldn't get there and left a little hole behind him. Uh, Munster try to exploit, but Max Stegan was the one to make the tackle. Yeah, that was nice play. Line's the middle. Line is the middle. Uh, Haley just bounced back down the blind side. Great cover tackle from Max Stegan there. He just, you know, gets there. He's going to hit Farrell. If not, he's going to hit Scanlon in the touch. Really good scramble defence. Former Ireland under 20. Hooker is John McKee, just 22 years of age. Finds his man again. Rory O'Loughlin wearing 11 but playing in the centre. Those of you joining us late, Kieran Frawley went off with a head injury. Here's Jordan Larmer. Oh, he's been twinkle toed all night. Larmer continues, stops, reverses, and accelerates again. Just a joy to watch. Unless you're wearing red. And Leinster have found a way out wide. And they're going to get in again. O'Loughlin with the try. O'Loughlin with the finish. But it all came from beauty and brilliance from Jordan Larmer. Yeah, that's it. But it, it comes from a lovely set piece. Strike attack. It's called an 11 play where you hit up and then bounce back. And Joe McCarthy punched close off the rook and then they. They swept back around with a couple of decoy runners, but Larmer makes it. I mean, having someone of his ability, his, his leg driving contact, once they're getting a hand to him, but he just seems to power through, and then it's the, the footwork. I'm not sure what Frank's looking at here, but I, I think that's a good try. Really good play, we just see it from here. So this is Joe, oh, looking at that forward pass there, maybe. That's Joe McCarthy running against the grain, yeah. gets him on the front foot. So it's Foley, the scrum half, to McCarthy, and that's what they're looking at. Was Talk it right. forwards? It's, it's not clear. Happy to take the kick. Oh, I think that angle. Yeah, go ahead. He's, he's letting it go, but again, from just stay there. Uh, look yeah, at that on, angle. On that angle, angle yeah, that absolutely, absolutely. On that angle, it looks absolutely okay. On the previous one, you would have had your doubts. But it was 
a couple of lovely passes by forwards. So Munster were down numbers. They jammed in, but I think it was Joe McCarthy got the ball away, and then Max Deegan got a brilliant pass over the top to Roy Lachlan, which created him the space down the left hand side. Conversion is good, and all of a sudden, Lencer. Yeah, you see, there's a dummy from Ryan Baird, and that's where Larmer just does his magic, creates a two sided attack. And from there, Lencer gets to the wit. See, this, this is a great pass here for McCarthy. He's getting smashed by Farrell. And then Max Deegan gets the ball away when Go Goggins tries to close. <laughs> 32 points to 22. We're back underway. All of a sudden, it's a 10 point gap. Remember, Munster down to 14. And they need to find a way, and they need to find a way really quickly of not, well, at worst, not letting this gap get any bigger. Devon Toner is into the game for Leinster. Also into the game, you saw a moment ago, Rory Scannell into midfield for Munster. Toner, another one who will call it a day at the end of this season. There he is. Leinster's leading cup winner. Devon Toner. Use it. Foley to the air. Earls waits. Adam Byrne comes on to him and waiting for him to hit the ground and then drives him backwards. And Leinster in the ascendancy in the last couple of minutes. The momentum has switched very much their way. It's Keenan Knox, the 23 year old no South African born prop wearing Number 18 four, for no Munster. Clearly. Yeah, Earls did really well there. It was a great chase by Byrne, but Earls managed to retain the ball. This is where Conor Murray, Keith Earls, okay. Joey Carvey just need to, Chris Farrell, just tighten up for a couple of minutes. Just, you know, just make sure you, when Scandal comes back on or, or his replacement goes back on, they're not further behind and they can go and chase chase that lead. Perfect. It's just Leinster sends blood. They're going for the juggler here now. They know they have a man advantage and they're hunting really hard. Numbers, please. Five calls. Well, Jeremy Lockman is going to have to throw Who's the hot? ball to this line-out for Munster, the prop forward. Yeah, this is where Leinster won't give him the front, you'd imagine. Ryan Baird's going to get it by Joe McCarthy. Make Lockman overthrow him. They won't give him the front. You're absolutely right. Play on, but please. they have managed Play on. to get it back somehow, Munster. And that will do right now without a hooker on the park. Securing possession for the line out any which way. Lockman sets it up. Connor Murray, Chris Farrell, just so many blue shirts in front of him. And then when he gets up and bounces off, as he has done a couple, there are another few to meet him. But didn't he do well? And what about that from an offload from Connor Murray? Oh, wonderful for Munster. Through the hands it goes. Kendallin, Murray, Knox. Munster comes storming back. Lencer aren't set defensively out the back door. Forward. It goes, but it goes out forward. the back door forward, if you Very know what I mean. Time. That's such a pity. That would have been an unbelievable try. We were talking about Jordan Larmer's footwork, but what about Munster's handling? Some of the offloads there from Conor Murray, Tom Ahern was just outstanding. And it starts with Chris Farrell, just fighting contact, working back, fending, just trying to give them a go forward. And that spark then from there, they just go the same way, this hands from Conor Murray out the back and we just see here, back inside from Tom O'Hearn, O'Donoghue Kandelan, you know, been massive so far and then when they bounce back down this side they just nearly get their hands free here if Jack O'Donoghue gets his nose through contact but just trips forward as Earls Sayers took a good finish from there but great hands by, by Munster and great ambition oh, It's an absolute joy to watch on this Saturday evening in the Aviva Stadium. There have been some memories created in this stadium over the we last month go, for both Leinster and Munster. For Munster, not great ones, but for Irish rugby, well, it's been a great month in the Aviva, and that passage of play was just a joy. Yeah, yeah look, at absolutely, Munster would have been good in the way they, they lost to the Toulouse in the end, but I, I, I do think that Munster have re-found their, their mojo. That, you know, I know they're losing this game, but... Um, they're really throwing things at Leinster, which is probably a criticism of the of the of the first game in Toma Park, where I felt they were very flat. So they're playing with a lot of spirit, a lot of intent, you know, and a lot of skill as well. They're just 
unfortunately, behind on the scoreboard because Leinster scored for some phenomenal tries. Just a word on young Ben Murphy, who's come into the game. Cormac Foley is not going to be able to continue. There he is, Ben Murphy, 21 years of age, a mascot in 2007, and he makes his debut in the Aviva Stadium against Munster. Yeah, that's what you call a dream of a day. That's brilliant, and obviously he's, he's bred for it. His dad, Richie Murphy, was is the Irish in our 20s coach, was part of, of the Irish coaching staff with, with Joe Schmidt for a long time, and uh, yeah, he's a talented player. He actually was in loan last year for a little while down in Munster when he had some injuries, so um, built up a nice bit of experience, plays for Old Wesley in the All-Ireland League, and uh, I know they, they, they reckon his service is, is, what's, is his unique point, selling point. Oh, that is not good to see at all. I hadn't realised it was quite so serious for Cormac Foley, but the medical staff will get him away. He's nursing that right arm or right Keep shoulder. The stability. Keep the uh, space. That That's where we're does at. not look good for the young man on what was a terrific performance for a fellow who's very inexperienced at this level. Yeah, I was actually down in St. George School this morning with her. All very proud of him, and he showed he's got the ability at this Foley. level. That was a huge performance by him. Set. Stay behind. behind. So then Murphy finds his man, who's O'Loughlin. Gets his first pass away from the breakdown of the professional game at senior level. Wait, blue. And that'll settle him in. And Leinster are out of their 22. Yeah, there's a lovely camera angle of Keane Healy there as a tight head. Um, obviously, he spent about nearly all his career. They, they tried him a little bit during the summer as a, as a tight head, but he, he pinned down that scrum there against Lock, Lockman, and uh, yeah, okay, very come, valuable come. addition to Leinster if he can cover that over the next couple of weeks. So then, Dermot Barron is into the game. Munster have a hooker. <laughs> down from Conor Murray. What can Munster do, if anything, as we head towards the final quarter at the Aviva Stadium? Advantage. They're going to get advantage and they're going to get a free play. A penalty for not running away. Try to play advantage, but blue locked on. Red knocked on, blue not roll away. But that's smart play by Munster, using the two big ball carriers. Farrell, first of all, to set him a target, and then using Jason Jenkins around Stop the corner. On. And now have a shot at goal and just wind down that clock until they get back to 15. All that was going on, it's worth explaining. Here the the reason that Munster please. now have a hooker on the field is because there was a scrum and they had to bring a hooker in. That was Dermot Barron, and he stays on the pitch, albeit that they're still down to 14. And I think the man that was taken out, was it hard to know? There were so many substitutes Number going on. I think it's Kandelan, no? I think it's Kandelan. Yeah. We'll confirm that in a couple of moments. But this to get it back to seven points for Joey Carberry and Munster. Struck it well. Judges had a little look at it for a moment, but happy it found its way home. And Munster are back to within seven. Leinster 32, Munster 25. Let's go, please. So both times, Harry Byrne has kicked short. Ryan Baird's got it, but I'm looking where Ryan Baird is starting here. They're going to kick long. It's Ryan Baird and Adam Byrne that go flying after it. And Byrne Let go meets the ball. Keith Earls as he Use it. comes back to ground, having gathered the ball for Munster. Jason Jenkins is an interesting acquisition for Leinster, having had such a Use short it. time at Munster. Really hasn't had the opportunity to make an impact. Murray, Adam Byrne underneath this one. Has time to get the pass away to Jordan Larmer, who's not surprisingly quickly put to ground. Leinster almost get away, but don't. And 
Munster turn it over for a moment. Look like they might be able to scamper downfield. Joey Carberry. Witcherly steps back inside. Lockman, good work from the prop forward just to drag it back in. Here's Farrell, who's really had a good game. It's been determined stuff from Chris Farrell. He just isn't going to ground easily, and he's made an absolute nuisance of himself for that Leinster midfield. Earls felt that one. Good hands to get the ball back inside, but not held on to. Advantage being played to Leinster, Key and Healy. Will go to ground and secure possession. A little bit of concern over Thomas O'Hearn. Slow to get back to his feet, he's okay now. Haley, that Hold one's on. touched in flight, which means everyone can play. Backwards. And Devon Toner just reaches up <laughs> into the sky and gathers the ball. Unfair advantage when you're six foot eleven in that sort of circumstance. Wait, Murphy. Kick from Osborne. Bounces up kindly for Chris Farrell. Andrew Conway. We're red. Dink in over the top, and I think all the players will be happy enough to see that one go out, and that will be the end of the yellow card from Munster's perspective. Kendellen will come back into the game, but concern now for Andrew Thank Conway. You. Yeah, good cover in the backfield by, by Conway. In fairness, the game, that was a long period of, of, of play, okay. lots of errors, handling, you know, a block down. But just I think, yeah, both teams will be happy just to go to this line out, restart with a set piece, and obviously Munster are back to 15, which. Making a swap? I don't think Conway was the intended substitute, but he is very much going to be the substitute now, and it's going to mean into the game comes Ben Healy. Healy will go to out half. I think Carberry drops to full back, which means that Mike Haley goes on the wing over yeah. on the far side. And there's the way it stands right now. Right now, if it finished, Munster would be fifth and they would be heading to the Bulls for their quarter final. That'd be a nightmare for Munster. Leinster will play Glasgow the way things currently stand. Another change for go. Munster. Daly comes in. Time on. Line is the middle. And that completes the changes for now. Oh, Taken by it over. Joe McCarthy. Out, out. One stop. Murphy. When did you make your debut? I made my debut in the Viva <laughs> Stadium in front of 30,000 people against Munster. You couldn't make it up. No lift, momentum of the ball carrier. Referee says that tackle's perfectly fine. Lockman on Devon Toner. Another player injured over on the far Lockman. side of the medical staff, and it's another Munster player. <laughs> Harry Byrne to Joey Carberry. Carberry runs Wait. into Wait. Rob Russell. On now. Larmer. Big buzz around the stadium. <laughs> the crowd don't want him kicking it. They want him to run. Wait! McCarthy again. Transfers the ball from oh, one hand and the other almost got away. Still there for Leinster. Ryan Baird runs into a good hit from Dermot Barron. Ed Byrne. Did I say Ed Byrne? Not Ed Byrne. Peter Dooley. Just a bit too close. And the referee's going to call it because... It's a bit too close to this guy. Kendellan is receiving attention and he doesn't look yeah, too course, steady, yeah. does he? No, he doesn't. We'll restart with the Lenser scrum there. In fairness, you can see the bit of fatigue in some of the players. The shapes aren't as, as good as they were in the first 60, 60 minutes, so there's a lot more one-out runners. There's some loose kicking, but, I mean, the pressure. The pressure must be on Munster's mind now, knowing that they've got to go and score. Converta tried to, to get a draw or, Score twice to win. Water off, please. Yeah, okay, Kandelan is now going to go for a HIA. And now Scammell comes back into the game. While that happens, I don't think we'll see Kandelan again. Just need to be careful now. We just need to be careful now. Yes. Oh. And another change for Leinster. 
Soroka into the game. And it's McCarthy who Push makes weight, which We're means Ryan Baird is going to go into the second row. And again, Soroka's just a freakishly talented player. It was brilliant in South Africa. It was brilliant for the Irish in their 20s. I need and he loved this. He, he loves the big occasion. Crouch! Bind! Sit! Steady! Feed from Ben Murphy. Stay there. Narrow side. Oh, There's man. just got Osborne. And the kick and chase is managed by Ben Healy. Use it. Where to from here for Munster? Farrell with Adam Byrne. Farrell does well to fend off the first oh, effort as Byrne came back to make the tackle. Earls plays scrum half Carberry and Knox as up quickly came Devon Toner, ever willing to continue to put in the hard yards. Munster move. will get the penalty. You can't roll like that. Yeah, and you can only look at Munster want to keep ball. Well, but he can't continue to crawl along the ground. Munster want to keep ball in hand. Uh, they're chasing the game, but uh, hindsight's 20-20 vision. But you'd think they just need to maybe get a little bit of territory. It's hard to see them breaking down Leinster on phase attack like that from that deep. And to give away a penalty is a killer it's too blow. Too much roll and crawl. Roll and crawl. Double trouble for Munster is Harry Byrne just turns the screw a little bit more and forces Munster right back into their own 22, about seven or eight metres short of their own line. Yeah, and the no penalty match. try kept a ball in a similar Six. position on the other side. Leinster's mall does look dangerous, but there's a lot of changes on, on, on the field now. Can they get their drill right here? The key will throw. Toner will be Maul. the person to Let receive it and the stop. mall is sent back to where it came from. Good first effort on defending that ball from Munster. Use it! It's there for Murphy. O'Loughlin. Two red jerseys there. Murphy again, Ryan Baird leaves it wisely for... Tackle! Peter Dooley. Soroka. Knox makes the tackle. Crowd raise their voices, O'Donoghue goes after the ball, just can't get his hands on it. Harry Byrne tries to burst into the gap between two Munster players, the door firmly shut as it is on Osborne as well. Deegan. Ryan Baird. Jeremy Lockman makes the tackle. Harry Byrne. Murphy and Leinster and Murphy once more and a lovely angle run by Russell. Munster hanging on a little. Larimer, great pass. Adam Byrne, brilliantly defended by Munster. Oh, no, no! Byrne almost away. Larimer, not for the first time, the architect. But Munster hold firm. They need to hold firm. 12 minutes left on the clock as they go in search of the home quarter final. Second at the start of the weekend. Now they find themselves down in fifth. Got advantage over. Earls goes after it. Ball bounces. Who's going to claim? On, play on. Toner <laughs> again. <laughs> Murphy. Well, it's that high. Drop down into it. Referee says no. No. Murphy. Uh, Advantage off feet, number eight, he, on his hands. He's interfered with, and you can't do that. On and that hand, was just over exuberance from Munster, trying to get after it, and in doing so, they've Ready, given away a cheap penalty. In fairness, it was a brilliant defensive set for Munster from the line out. They stopped them up. all. They made Munster play, or Leinster play away. Seven or eight phase later, it looked like a bit of magic from Larmer was going to put Adam Byrne in, but again, it was a scramble, the counter rook, and they forced a turnover. You just hear this is brilliant. You know, Larmer has no right to get that ball away there. Adam Byrne breaks the first tackle, but look at the players arriving. They just 
get in there and count the rook. Really nice pass. Gives Adam Byrne half a chance, but unfortunately for Munster, they didn't clear their lines properly and they have now given away a, a penalty. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if Harry Byrne kicks this. Just a word on Jordan Armour as he's put up by the director in picture. You, you, you forget how outstandingly he good he is with ball in hand, but the truth of the matter is, prior to the injury, he didn't Water look up. himself. Tonight, he comes back after, what, nearly three months out of the game, and he's on absolute ready? fire. Is that to do with playing full-back as much hey, as playing in the feet. wing? Shot called. I, I definitely think he's a, he's a better full-back. Um, than, he's a class winger, but I think he definitely was out of form as well. He looked like he lost his confidence, and maybe he just needed that rest. But but what's most impressive is how he came back after three months playing a high-paced game like this and make it look like it's a computer game. Absolutely. You know, and that's what he's doing. Sorry, sorry. So then, inside the final 10 minutes just of what has been a pulsating game at the Aviva Stadium, and Leinster with the opportunity to go 10 in front again. Terrific kick from Harry Byrne, really, really good. That was no gimme, and he got it. And it is Leinster 35, Munster 25. So that takes the loser bonus away from Munster at the moment. Munster obviously need to score a try, which would give him two points. They get a bonus for four tries and a loser bonus point. So that would drop them down to sixth place if it was okay. to finish right now. And that would mean a trip to Ulster in the quarterfinals by our calculations, but Ross and the boys will confirm all this at the stop. end of play. Knox and then Witterly. Murray and Healy and uh, Munster trying desperately to find a gap in that Leinster defence. Oh, backwards. Mike Haley. Oh, backwards. Ball is out. Oh, play on. Good contest. Murray. Lockman. Somehow they've just got to keep that discipline and shape while trying to find that gap. Just can't afford to let it get too loose. Keith Earls steps back inside. That's the halfway line. Connor Murray for Joey Carberry. Lenser up quickly again. Lockman. And then Ben Healy. And then Chris Farrell. Murray arrives. Carberry to Lockman. Worth mentioning that Connor Murray is still out there when maybe he wouldn't be if Craig Casey had been available. But Casey, a late withdrawal due to illness and uh, Paddy Patterson called up as the replacement scrum half. Scannell saw a little gap, Murray on his shoulder. Through the phases, Munster here. continue to go and that creates a little bit of space and did Earls do well to pick it up because the pass wasn't a good one. Possession secured for Munster. Scannell. Knox runs into Ryan Baird, who's put in an enormous shift for Leinster. Witcherly. Penny thought about going after it, instead stands up to look at the next opportunity. But it's there for Murray. And Knox once more. Really patient, really accurate from Munster by and large. And on a couple of occasions, they haven't been accurate, they've recovered. And they're going forward slowly. Uh, slowly, phase by phase, they're starting to get closer to that 22. Now they're over. Jeremy Lockman sets it up for Connor Murray. Just missed the intended target, but scooped up beautifully by Joey Carberry. Dropped. And he gets the momentum back in Munster's favour again. And that was risky from Haley to Earls, and he did all he could to keep the ball in play. Six minutes left on the clock. 
Jeremy Lockman goes route one, puts the head down and sets Munster up once more. Connor Murray, Niall Scannell. Big effort this from Munster. Healy back inside, Carberry just about gets away from the tackle of Ryan Baird. O'Donoghue with Healy on his shoulder. Murray knocks. 75 minutes into the game after all the effort. All the way back. The energy required in this final five minutes from Munster to somehow pull this one out of the fire. Scannell, Murray, Lockman. A try would give them a four try bonus point. They'd still be behind, but they'd be within seven. It would give them two in total. It would get them a home quarter final, but they can't find a way. Another huge, huge hit. This time it's Osborne. Wow, what, what attack. And what brave attack by, by Munster. There must be 20 phases there. We just see here, they just maybe throw that. What you do, though? Yeah, that's, that's not the right pass there by Joey and Ferris. He's trying to make things happen, but Osborne hasn't marshaled all the time. They hadn't shortened the defence. Daly will feel that one for a while. Much has shown unbelievable courage going chasing this game, but you just feel just a key moment their skill set isn't quite where it needs to be, but... They're playing with ambition, they're trying to make it happen. Just there's three or four passes that went to ground there in that phase of play that, that cost them. That 10 point gap means that Munster would finish with 56 points, and as you can see, that will leave them in sixth place. The top four Leinster Stormers, Ulster, and Bulls will have home quarter finals. Leinster would play Glasgow Stormers against Edinburgh, Ulster would take on Munster if it finished right yeah. now. Which, to be honest, Munster probably would prefer than go to Pretoria to play the Bulls. I know they're, they're trying to win this game, and, but they went to Ravenhill three or four weeks ago and won. Takes the travel out of it, takes the attitude out of it. Might not be the worst possible, worst result for them. Beautiful sunset in Dublin and those up on the upper reaches over on the far side. We have the sunshine the to finish their day unfortunately jack daly is going to have his day finished by that tackle it didn't look as significant as it clearly is yeah there was huge physicality in it but i didn't think he must have just fell awkwardly fell yeah. awkwardly on it and that's that's, that's a pity and obviously they've used all their forward subs so paddy patterson's going to come on Yeah, it's been attritional. There have been a lot of bodies leaving the field, uh, not in the normal way of substitutions. There's going to be a cost for both sides at the end of this one. Okay. What are we doing here, guys? Are we staying on or? Just we staying on? <laughs> There is Patterson. So I'm not quite sure how they, well, I mean, you think about these things before the game. What if, what if, what if? We're now at the point of, whoosh, who knows? Yeah. Who goes where? Yeah, I don't know what. I'll take Give Connor off. Here on the yep. sideline, we'll start the game. In well, fairness, Paddy's coming on for Connor. Paddy is coming on for Connor. Happy on the so sideline. Where? Okay. Time on, let's go. Open Patrick up, Patterson Munster. comes on for Connor. Who has come on for Daly? We'll have to solve that in a minute. Stay there. Right now, Leinster have a defensive line-out to look okay. after. And they've done that OK. And Harry Byrne dispatches. Yeah, that's clinical in fairness. Great pressure on Harry Byrne from, from the Munster kick chase, but he gets the kick away and... Very happy to relieve a little bit of pressure because Leinster were under big pressure there the last four or five minutes. Time off. Ten. Leinster going to make a change. David Hawkshaw is going to come into the game. Harry Byrne 
will make way. Hawkshaw, Number another to the target man sure at the end of this season. He'll go to Connor. Harry Burns had a good game. Yeah, excellent Come game. He's, he's put Leicester in the right area of the field. He's pulled a trigger with some really nice passing, and uh, his goal kick has been excellent as well. Let's open up. Just Let's clear up. Scott, Di Scott. You're slowing down your own time. Or Derm Dermot Barron is back on, so we've got two hookers on the pitch for Munson. There we go. Knew you'd solve it eventually. Munster inside the final five minutes of the final game in the final round of matches in the URC. Right now, they are on their travels in the quarterfinals. They will finish in sixth place. A try, converted try, well, that would change things. But can they find one? Just over three minutes left on the clock is... Ben Healy gets Munster up to the 22. Patterson into the Leinster 22. Rory Scannell plays scrum half. Popped off to Witcherly. Scannell again. Mike Haley and Chris Farrell, who was carried and carried and carried all day. Witcherly is down now. Finian Witcherly, that is. Ben Healy, Joey Carberry, Adam Byrne had lined him up, and Carberry did well to avoid a significant contact. Barron, Healy, oh, where is that one off to? O'Donoghue had a little look up to see what was in front of him and couldn't grab a hold of the ball. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of frustration with Munster. They're not really shortening the Leinster defensive line, and, you know, they're trying to throw the miracle pass. That's that's not the first one that's Let's gone go. long and, and over the top. Face. But you also feel Leinster scramble defense is going to get get him there. So I think Munster need to go through Leinster and also an easy. Where Let's go, please. It's been proving very difficult to get around him. So you're a player that's way. Yes. Inside the final two minutes. Jordan Larmer. Player of the match, not chosen by Bernard, it has to be said, but not one you're going to argue with. No, absolutely not. No, he's, he's been outstanding, well deserved. Set. Did Lencer use Rory Lachlan here to punch this up? Oh, Max Deegan. Oh. oh, Max Deegan slips away, and Max Deegan is off. And Lencer look to put the exclamation mark on the performance and finish it off, but they can't. But Munster knock it forward. Farrell as he had a look out wide to see what was on, took his eye off the ball, it's knocked forward, and you feel that may well be that. Yeah, brilliant from Max Deegan, we know he's fast, but just a little bit of footwork to duck back inside Paddy Patterson. Good defence by Ben, he needs to get in a passing channel as Rory Lockman up to, Let's go, please, to go under the post, Let's go. but just another handling error just here. Gives Leinster a second set-piece in a row, and... You'd imagine it closing out from here. They We're late in the minute game. Left. Keep the space. Crouch. Find. Set. Steady. May well be the final play of the game. Final play of regular season in the URC. Same scrum. And we'll same reset scrum. the scrum, and that will be the final phase. No, same scrum coming across. We came into this weekend knowing who the top eight were going to be, but it's been go, a belter of a weekend in terms of it ebbing and flowing and not really sure who was going to end up where. Other square. than answer, of course, who, uh, secure that number one seeding. Yes. We now know Leinster will play Glasgow in the quarterfinals. Looks like it's going Crouch. to be the Stormers in Edinburgh, Ulster, Bind. and Munster, and Bulls will host Set. the Sharks. Thank you. Stay square. Ball's out. Ball is out since the referee can Munster get a hold of it and have one last late. throw of the dice. Leave it. Stay here. No, they can't. It's there for Leinster, who are going to leave the Aviva with yet another good memory from the month of May. And that was a great game. In fairness to Munster, they threw everything at Leinster, just lacked a little bit of accuracy, made some poor decisions at the wrong times, but 
you, know, you can see what they're trying to do, and obviously Mike Prendergast, the Graham Round Tree will try and add to that. And they're still they're, they've got an away draw, but it's still very much in the hunt to win this competition. No doubt about that. They will be very disappointed that they will not be going back to Thoman Park for a home quarter final. They leave the Aviva for the second time in May on the wrong end of the scoreline. Leinster march on. They take the victory. They take the number one slot and they take the game by 35 points to 25. Well, that is remarkable. We talked, didn't we, about the depth of this Leinster squad and how it's the envy of Europe and they've beaten Munster with second and third string players, Rob. Yeah, I, I think you, you really have to credit this Leinster squad at this moment in time. You know, to come into the Aviva Stadium in front of 35 odd thousand people and put a performance like that against a very strong Munster team, it's, it's an enormous credit to the whole squad, the whole coaching staff, and I think the organization of Leinster Rugby as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to